There are many individuals in Nikkei's story that are labeled as heroes. Those who have defended humanity and risked everything to ensure the battle can continue to reclaim the surface. One underlying tone of this game is the struggles of war, and with it, the hardships of losing loved ones on the battlefield. The members of Goddess were nothing short of exemplary, having the strongest combined might humanity had ever seen, even in modern day. They were the heroes of humanity, ushering in wave after wave of suitors to come, all of which were fully intent on fighting just as Goddess had decades ago. During the events of Chapter 21, we learn of another heretic name, Anichiro. Up until this point in the story, we'd only been introduced to Liberalio and Nihilister, so the thought of one more heretic existing was all too alluring at the time. This heretic, however, would prove to have another story filled with loss and hardship. During the events of Red Ash, Anichiro, codenamed Cinderella at the time, was abducted from an Elysian research facility. She was created to be the trump card of humanity and aid goddess in reclaiming the space elevator. This action alone would have ended the war as we know it, and our story would have been vastly different than what we're experiencing now. Cinderella, unfortunately, proceeded to become the first heretic, the first major threat to humanity created by the raptures. She'd proceed to decimate entire armies, Nikes, and various strategic points humanity had utilized to change the tide of the war. She was seen as a ruthless killing machine, bringing death and destruction to everyone and anything she laid eyes on. Goddess had actively lost their ace in the hole, and now were forced to kill one of their own. Interestingly enough, through Last Kingdom, Mog, and now Chapter 30, we have some more information on just how tragic Cinderella's viewpoint was. Originally, many theory crafters in the community, myself included, assumed corruption entirely rewrote Anike's function. This made them slaves to the raptures, actively eradicating who they once were. Through interactions with Chatterbox and direct confirmation in Mog, we know that it's much more sinister than that. Nikes who become heretics are not entirely lost. They still retain who they are, but are forced to watch the actions of their heretic self in their own subconscious. In Cinderella's case, or rather, Anakiro's, she had her entire viewpoint warped and twisted. To Anakiro, as we've seen in the secret ending of Mog, she was engaged in a constant fight against imposters imitating the Goddess Squad. Everything she'd done, from her perspective, was for her heroes, those she looked up to so much. Every heinous action she committed, to her, were fights that would bring humanity closer to winning the war. Anakiro admired Goddess and strived to be like them in every way, shape, and form. Sadly, it would be her own heroes that would bring her down. We know from Last Kingdom that corruption does bend the user's mind to the will of the raptures, but in addition, it's also an endless torture for them too. Anything the caster of the corruption wished for the victim to do could be done without question. Any heinous action could be committed without a second thought. It is safe to say that Anichiro received the deepest form of corruption, so deep that it even affected the deepest reaches of her mind. There's even some interactions in the Red Ash cutscene that give a sad undertone to Anichiro's supposed death. As the fight ensues, Goddess fights tooth and nail to bring Anichiro down, utilizing all their resources to defeat the heretic. Once Red Hood is able to gain the upper hand, we see her pin Anichiro to a wall, ready to shoot her at point-blank range. Strangely though, Anichiro doesn't have a look of sadness on her face, but instead, is smiling. This can be interpreted in several different ways. It could be genuine happiness to be released from her personal hell, or it could be contentment with the fact that her mission to kill the imposter goddesses had failed. Regardless, at the end of Red Ash, we see Anichiro defeated, but not necessarily dead. We know from Chapter 19's story that she survived, being a test subject for the earliest forms of Vapaus, eradicating all nanomachines in her body with direct contact to it. We also know from Grave that she was rescued from the hands of these researchers, placed under Grave's care ever since. In modern day, Grave is carrying this heretic around as she appears to be stuck in a cryogenic sleep. The question of her corruption is still left to speculation, but I think it's a safe theory to suggest that she's entirely cured. We've seen what direct contact a potent Vophouse does to a heretic, this being the interaction between Modernia and the Commander in Chapter 13. We don't know what the Legendary Commander's blood potency was per se, 
but we do know it had to have some effect on the heretics. The resurfacing of Anichiro's character raises many points of opportunity in the story. If Anichiro were to awaken, would she fight alongside humanity? Would she be willing to rectify the wrongdoings that she had done during her corruption? Is she still stable? And does she still even remember the events of Red Ash? Can this young suitor who looked up to the Goddess Squad undo her past actions and stand to fight alongside humanity? Could she accomplish what she failed to do before and truly become a Goddess of Victory? I hope you enjoyed this short little video that I put together before chapter 31 and 32's release. I'm very excited to see that Anichiro will awaken in these two chapters, and if you want to experience these live with me on my Twitch, the link will be down in the description below. Thank you all for joining me, and I will see you all in the next video. Janet.